Welcome to my lecture online. Now for a more practical aspect of the draining of a tank is how long does it take to drain a tank? Now keep in mind that initially when the tank is full, the rate at which the water comes out is pretty high, so the velocity down there will be high. But as the tank, as the tank drains and the height diminishes, the water flow will come out slower and the velocity at the, at the outflow will be, will be less and eventually when the tank is almost empty, the speed will be relatively small because after all, the velocity at the bottom is equal to the square root of 2gh in general when we ignore the, the difference in the, the area of a1 and a2 and so you can see that as h diminishes, v diminishes as well. So we still start with the same equation, a1, v1 equals a2, v2. And now we're going to replace v1 by the rate of change of the height. And v2 is going to be replaced by the square root of 2gh. Then we solve this equation for dh dt. Then we have what we call a differential equation, where the height is a function of time. And then if we solve for that equation, we end up with this equation right here. Now you say, well, where does that equation come from? Well, you can check if you take the derivatives and plug it back in, you'll get the original differential equation again. And also notice that if a2 over a1 becomes equal to 1, when the area at the bottom, the cross-section area of the hole here is the same as the cross-section area of the hole there, then this becomes simply the equation of kinematics in the vertical direction. So you can see the similarity of the two equations. So now if we take this equation and we take the derivative of h with respect to time, we get this. Notice that this here would be your initial velocity. Uh, well, actually, this here is your initial velocity. When you take the derivative, you end up with this. The t disappears, and here you have a single t right there. And then if we set this equal to 0, because at the very end, when the tank is completely drained, that is when the difference in the height goes to zero. At that point, when we set it equals zero and we solve for t, we get this equation right here. This is the time it takes to drain a tank. Now to see an example of that, let's say that the cross-sectional area at the top is 0.1 square meters, at the bottom 0.005 square meters. Let's say that the initial height of the fluid was 4.8 meters. How long does it take to drain this tank? You simply plug in the values for A1, A2, h sub naught and g, the acceleration to gravity, and in this case it would take about 20 seconds to drain that tank. And so there it is, the equation that allows you to actually figure out how long it takes to drain a tank.